This is the Night Force Action Report from HorribleNight.com for Tuesday, October 8th, 2013. I'm your host, Justin Lacey, joined tonight by two gentlemen. Uh, one of them goes by the name Ethan Moses. That is me. And, and Hello. The, and the other one, shrouded in darkness this evening, Josh Lee. Yeah, uh, It's actually not that dark in this room. Uh, but just the way, you know, I don't know. I don't know what the problem is. I can see my forehead just fine. I don't know why you can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, we, it's been a, it's been a bit since we've hung out, gentlemen. Um, man, uh, it's about three weeks. Exactly. I would, I would say the shit's happened. I got sick. I had a birthday. Ethan went everywhere. Ethan. Yeah. Ethan, where the hell have you been? What did you, you did a lot oh, of stuff. Man. Tell me about yeah. Europe. <laughs> we made a lot of uh, a lot of mistakes, a lot of vacation mistakes. They were actually really fun, but in Europe, everything's really cheap. So, uh, to the American audience, it may sound like I'm bragging about traveling all over the world. This nothing I'm saying is expensive. It's you can fly anywhere for like twenty bucks here. It's it's amazing. So we decided that we should go to Oktoberfest this year. <laughs> uh, but before that, we figured we should go to Amsterdam, which is, you know, probably you know, the two capitals of debauchery in Europe at this current moment. Um, and, uh, it was, Amsterdam is beautiful, by the way. If you go, don't just go to the red light district of pervs, go visit the city. It's beautiful. <laughs> magnificent. Um, you know Oktoberfest is great. Oh my God. It is, it is. I, I calculated that I had about three gallons of beer during the whole weekend. It was amazing. They're so big one liter beers. Everyone's singing, eating bratwurst and, you know, Speaking in language, I don't understand, but I, I felt like they were happy. Um, uh, Oktoberfest is great. I'm really excited. It would never work in America. There would be like 15,000 fights like immediately. Like within, like within an hour, there would be like so many fisticuffs. And I was actually indirectly involved with some fisticuffs um, during Oktoberfest. So it started to rain, and we had to leave, and we went to a, uh, an Italian restaurant that was also having an Oktoberfest, and suddenly, at the corner of my eye, all these dudes start fighting and stuff, and I'm like, whoa, this is Oktoberfest, it's supposed to be about peace, but then they start, like, picking boards up and hitting each other and shit. What? Yeah, it was fucking the weirdest thing I've ever Wait, seen. Wait, whoa, not hang seen... on, what? <laughs> they were pulling boards up, like, they were pulling bench boards up, and, like, just, it like, the weirdest thing I've ever seen, because I've not seen a fight here at all in Europe. So... Um, I thought I would, <laughs> so I decided that I should walk over and try to like create peace with them. And my my German friend was like, "No, you can't. They probably have knives." Do uh, <laughs> and I was like, "What? <laughs> like, no way!" And they were like, "No, they have knives." So I I I thought, well, there's only you know, there, I have to stop this. I have to prevent this from going south. And so I sang the Circle of Life on top of a uh, a bench, and <laughs> and I I did not expect it to work, and it fucking worked. For some reason, everyone's attention was like just completely turned away from the event, and they all looked at me as I sang. And I don't really know the lyrics, but I know the beginning. That's like, and and everyone it was like in that scene, and everyone like all the animals were like, like looking up and stuff. And I couldn't believe it. And my wife was like, I'm really proud of you. Like, it was really, like, a really proud moment. I was really, really excited. <laughs> Just so you know, he's he's not lying. That was sent <laughs> to me uh, <laughs> on Saturday. <laughs> and look who he sent it to. And it's Peace Commish. <laughs> and he sent it to me twice, which it's, like, super serious. This is... <laughs> This is an email that has to go through. I'm not sure what your email is any longer. Well, I, 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 here's all I've been of them that to, I know. Well, I've been listening to the touch all like like Stan Bush, and I kept playing it on my phone every time something happened, and like I was really energized, and like I was like, oh, Josh Lee like is always thinking about that song. I think I actually kind of assume <laughs> and that song is always playing in your head. So I thought I should contact you immediately. Sure, though. yeah. This may have been my proudest moment in life. I mean, I was uh, yeah, it was great. <laughs> Really excited. You made America proud. So it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Uh, it's that's awesome. I, I'm, I wish I, I I wish there was video of that. Like there's video of so many of your other proud moments. I I there may be, there's pictures of this this particular proud moment, which is a really stupid moment for most people, but it was 
good one for me, and I and I made I made the claim that I was a Kofi Annan of Oktoberfest, um, <laughs> which, which you know it was probably pretty unrealistic, but you know it was fun. So go to Oktoberfest sometime if you can. So you know? I don't even understand what it is other than beer, and I saw photos of a giant mm-hmm. tent. Is what it, else do you need to know? What? I'm just saying, Seymour, Indiana has Oktoberfest. Should I go to that? No. <laughs> Seymour, Indiana? <laughs> no. The beer's not even half as good. One. <laughs> Two. Um, it's in Seymour, Indiana. <laughs> no, I like Seymour, actually. I, I gotta take the back. I mean, you know, Oktoberfest is all about love and, and beer and brats. So it's pretty simple to, like, you know, I think you could reproduce it relatively easily. So it's like a state farm. Um, oh, it is, like, the drunkest state fair you can imagine. They have, like, roller coasters and it was raining, and people were drunk, and they were still riding these roller coasters. I mean, it was like crazy. Like they don't give a fuck. They're like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Did they bring, if someone dies, it's Did they bring in the roller coasters? Yeah, they, it's like Carney set everything okay. up. Like it was a oh man, it was like an adult playground, but there was kids there, which made me uncomfortable. How were they um, at drinking beer? Uh, well, they weren't drinking. Okay. Well, I don't think they were drinking beer, but they were there anyway. And so I kind of like, I kind of thought, well, maybe I should be on my best behavior, which I kind of was for the most part. Um, you could put but anything kinda in a thing. sippy cup. Well, and you, <laughs> you can drink know. here at like, I think seven is the, the legal drinking age here. Like, seven. like seven, you can have a beer. <laughs> Nine, you can have a, you can have a, a you know, a, a hard cola. And then eleven, you can you can do cocaine. It's, I mean, they're they're pretty progressive in terms of that stuff. <laughs> Sounds legit to me. Yeah, too legit. Josh, you um, seem to be in better spirits than the last few times I've talked with you. What's been going on? Uh, well, I got a new job, a new new job. Do Ooh. they have water cooler? Not a new new like the the little <laughs> yeah, vacuum and... thing from Teletubbies. <laughs> but uh, all you guys that have kids, you know what I'm talking about. That are eight. Uh, yeah, so I got a I got a new job. I don't want to. It's I don't want to talk. About about the specifics, because that's weird, but it's new, and it's good. It's, like, really good. Really excited for that, and uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about maybe better hours, and <laughs> maybe more podcasts, and what? more video games, mm. all that good stuff. So, mm. pretty so, yeah, excited about that kind of thing. It was the man's fault. That's why you weren't, haven't been on the show. Well, I mean, there, there was voluntary leave. <laughs> However, however, I mean, I kicked him out. The hiatus turned into a, uh, like a, it was, uh, I don't know. At some point there, if I, even if I wanted to start doing shows again, I couldn't. So, (laughs) um, but, uh, yeah, so that's, that's really fun. Exciting. uh, Speaking of, um, Oktoberfest, I actually also celebrated Oktoberfest to celebrate, um, the new job, Kylie and I went to uh, Red Robin, <laughs> so, <yeah>. um, <laughs> and I had the Oktoberfest burger and the Sam Adams Oktoberfest beer. <laughs> nice. And I thought of Ethan, uh, and then this really crazy, really drunk Scottish lady came up at the bar and sat down next to us, <laughs> and uh, just started cussing and just bitching about how people can't drive in Carmel, like how these assholes in their SUVs just run her off the road on her bicycle. And uh, it was really awkward. And uh, it was, and so I'm, I'm like, oh, well, I think it's time to go. And then poor Kylie, she gets stuck talking to this woman for like t- 20 <laughs> minutes. And she just, and it's like, well, she's got a real nice accent, but the stuff coming out of her mouth is like, she sounds like a Euro truck simulator driver, you know? <laughs> like, Jesus, lady. <clears throat> Those um, so that's that fun. I don't know. Restaurant bars they attract a an interesting group of people. If you aren't just couple who doesn't doesn't care to wait, like you guys are just gonna be normal at the bar. But the people that just kind of wander up solo, I found are um, they got a uh, they got some stories behind them. <laughs> right, right. I was yeah. I was actually at Ruby Tuesdays a couple weekends ago during a Colts game. Just because I wanted to grab some food, but I didn't want to miss any of the game. So I went in there by myself. It's, so that's like 2.30 in the afternoon, maybe, for the second half or whatever it was. And, um, yeah, this about a half hour into my meal, this lady, 60-plus years old, just comes in and orders a gin and tonic. And just sits down, like, two seats from yeah. me. 
those and, regulars. And I was nervous that she – oh, she wasn't a regular. They had no idea. They were like kind of – they were oh. kind of – terrified of her because i thought she was gonna <laughs> like sit down next to me and just like start talking my ear off but she didn't say a word the entire time and every time the the bartender who was you know ruby tuesdays he's a little a little too friendly and uh he just keeps asking do you want a menu do you want anything else do you want blah, blah, blah? no 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 just chilling just smelling like cigarettes drinking my gin and, gin and tonic some shit must have gone down but i got the hell out of there was she I'm wearing crazy. sweatpants <laughs> no <laughs> Was she covered she was in wearing. cat hair? Possibly. Possibly. What was she wearing? What was she wearing? I don't... Khakis? I didn't... Pantsuit? Smart pantsuit? I, <laughs> I think probably a pantsuit was involved. Wait, so... <laughs> Smart pantsuit. <laughs> so a 61-year-old woman walks in, has a gin and tonic, keeps to herself... And that yeah, freaks people out? Yeah, right. dude, you guys have, like, you guys have, <laughs> the, 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 the United States of fear has overtaken you. Not everybody is going to murder you. <laughs> She's, this poor old woman, probably like, you know, was like, yeah, I want a gin and tonic. I'll go to Ruby Tuesdays. That's a friendly but, place. But she did not, like, I mean, her demeanor was not friendly. It was, it was, uh, it was a little aggressive. It was, but, but, yeah, so you just kept waiting for her to say something or, like, I don't know. Explode. I don't know what it was. But, but she didn't actually do any of those things? Not f- no. So I was in the bar the other day, and this guy <laughs> comes in. He was super average looking. He came up and said hi, and he sat down, and he drank a beer, and he kept to himself and watched sports. I think he was about to shoot the place up. <laughs> he's, he's, like, he was about, are you yeah, watching he was Fox about to News, up. Justin? What the fuck is going on? <laughs> are old ladies the biggest threat to American security? <laughs> Here now, Justin Lacey. <laughs> I just Thank get, God you're not part of Homeland Security. I or just TS. get really judgmental because when I judge when I watch football. What can I say? <laughs> well, I understand that. I understand uh, that. Um, Josh and I also had a mandate um, this yeah. weekend. Do you want to talk like about Riddick? Do you want to talk about Riddick at all? Yeah, I think we should. <laughs> oh, I think. Did yeah. you guys see it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'd like to oh, add wait. in a couple. So we went to the what's studio? it called? The studio Movie Grill yeah. Cinema, Studio Movie Grill Cinema House. Uh, some combination of like half those words, and um, this it's like I don't know if that used to be a place there, but around Indianapolis they've had other places that were like you could eat and watch a movie. Uh, so this is the first time both of us have been there. I think they just opened, but. Yeah. The pl- the place was pretty nice. Like, the screen was good. Seats were good. The seats were awesome. Uh, like, food was fine. <laughs> like, it was like a little more expensive and not like the greatest thing, but it was like Drinks not bad were, at all. Um, bigger than they needed to be. Yeah, they were, and they had booze in them, which was cool. Uh, but it was re- so this so you go in and they have like a million self serve like kiosk things to get your tickets. And then, like, the person who takes your tickets hands you a menu and tells you the special, like a hostess or host. And Ugh, then you go to already. the theater and you sit down in these, like, nice recliners and they got, like, a TV tray that swings around. And, like, yeah, it's very comfortable. And they lean back. Uh, but And there's a button to, to get service. You hit the button and some person, like, within maybe five seconds comes crouch sprinting down the aisle <laughs> in front of you and they appear like crotch level like you it's like are they going under my table like what is about to happen hello hey uh, yeah you? it's it, yeah they, they just kind of like pop up and they just get like there's got to get kind of close and they have a little ipod to take like to take your order and they can't like they they it was it's really awkward i like i felt I mean, yeah, bad I, I, every I, single time they came to serve i was looking at the interface and you made the comment but i was looking at the interface on the phone and just like Everything was just – their buttons were too small for human fingers. Yeah. And we're just, we're just both like, why didn't they give you an iPad? This is, this right. is, <laughs> this is just ridiculous. Ridic- ridiculous. Uh, uh, so, so that was Rudian in the chat. No, it's not my fault. Uh, anyways, you want to – you can – Bring up, you talk, talk let's about talk about Dick Riddick, the adventures oh, of my fucking, Dick Riddick and his dog. Oh my god, <laughs> that was so. The movie is so weird. It like, is. I, we shouldn't spoil it because people should see it because everybody loves Vin Diesel. But I'm just saying. Oh my god, I'm just saying the first thirty minutes are a Pixar movie. That's yeah, all. Yeah. That's all. It's all, so, all but also to. kind of Castaway. <laughs> yeah, a little and bit. that yeah, and. 
<laughs> it's just so weird. And it is absolutely a sequel to Chronicles of Riddick, like in this timeline and the story and stuff. But they may they they may kind of made Pitch Black too, right? I mean, you yeah. can see that from the previews. I mean, they the literally preview, they go, literally oh, yeah, combine the two Pitch movies. Black. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think I thought the creature effects were done really well, and we I think we enjoyed the action scenes, and um, and then everything else we were just laughing at, like well, I like don't. it's like the dialogue and some of the <laughs> this was bad. Some of this, some of it was so bad. But they were everybody in that movie was so all in on that <laughs> script. Yeah, like I don't know what that director was doing. Uh, I don't think he, not a good job, but to, <laughs> that he got the actors to like just like take some of the shittiest lines and just nail it. I think the the best performance in the movie was uh, da- Sir David Batista. <laughs> Batista was was pretty. He was pretty good. Oh man. Uh, yeah, it's man. I can't, I can't, you see Katie Sackhoff's movie. boob, Starbuck. You see some boob. Yeah, so, yeah. It was. I mean, it was a fun movie. Like. like not good, but it was fun. Isn't I remember it? the whole time. I, was like, oh, this I, was... I wouldn't see it again. It was entertaining. Right. It was just, yeah. It felt like it was multiple parts, and then the end just happened. It was just like, oh, <laughs> yeah. we're done. See ya. See you next week, guys. <laughs> I actually, I got more entertainment, and Josh, you're going to disagree with this, but I got more entertainment out of that that movie, and I'd rather have more of those than I've gotten out of the Expendables. Like the Expendables can't even do the dumb sense of humor that Riddick has, right? Like it had, it had the action scenes that just, I could ignore pretty much everything else. Um, but, um, and then the writing was so bad that it was laughable. But like you said, it was just, it was just the fact that they were all in on their performances that, mm-hmm. I don't know, we were having a good time. We're, but well, yeah, we, I mean, I immediately walked out of the film and I was like, that was terrible, <laughs> but I couldn't, I like, we were, I, I had a smile on my face, you know, like it was, it was kind of so bad it was good, I thought. But yeah, no, I, I and actually I, I'm going to kind of agree with you on that, especially after that second Expendables. Yeah. Like I don't think, but I, that's completely different kinds of films. But just like the dumb fun with explosions and stuff, mm-hmm. nobody does that better than Fast and the Furious <laughs> just, franchise, of course. We, we were we were both <laughs> just like thinking. I appreciate bad films. There's so many moments. There's a, I mean, there's so many moments in this movie where you know Vin Diesel is like filming it, and just in his head is just. I look really badass right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was our, <laughs> that was our takeaway. It was like, man, he love he just. There's a reason he like mortgages home to finish this film. <laughs> it's because he just he just wanted to see himself in the theater. He probably he's probably gone to see this like eight times. It almost made me wish that, you know, he had like really long locks of hair so they could blow in the wind more during some. Of those <laughs> oh my god, that would be the best if he just like that was like part of his like. Well, oh, I, you know, there's a, his journey <laughs> in the film. If it, like, you know, like there's a part where some time passes, and if he had just disappeared, and they'd cut away from him for like a little while, which and they kind of did, and then, but if he had reappeared and he had just, it, you're just like, oh fuck, who knows how long it's been? He's got like just down to his ass hair, <laughs> and it's just wavy and just like fluffy, but also like it's just like you know conditioned real nicely, no frayed ends. <laughs> Those diesel locks. Well, hopefully they make another one and they get that right. And oh, oh my God. Like at the beginning of that movie, there's so much fucking diesel <laughs> all up in your face. <laughs> you see so much. Like you see every pore, every line on his face. And it's just all up in it. It just brown. It's, oh my God. It's max, it's, there's maximum diesel <laughs> in like the first five minutes of that. Like you better love him so much. You could tell yeah. he's also like his face is also like that of a fifty year old man. I would I would like it, to meet the person that went a lot to of creams. went to see that movie that does not like Vin Diesel. Because because seriously, if yeah, if you're I don't I don't love Vin Diesel. I don't love Vin Diesel. Right. I'm relatively indifferent to him. This movie made me kind of feel sorry for him by the end of it. Like it was just like he's like Vin like because it, it sounds like he put his heart and soul into. 
getting this movie to where it was at. I mean, it was yeah. He had a lot to do with obviously, you know, with the financial aspect of it. And then at the end of it, you were just like, oh man, did you really have to put that like <laughs> that slick motorcycle jump at like halfway through it? <laughs> yeah. like, he just seemed, I felt like he was just really confused about what he was supposed to be doing in reference. But, and I but, feel like someone like listened to Vin Diesel way too much in this movie. Yeah, like, no, anyone else get that totally. <laughs> like, there's been something where. You know, he's kind of taken on the Riddick franchise with the director, uh, David Twohey, or whatever his name is. Um, and Too high. Like, you know, when they made Pitch Black, they had other producers or other creative inv- creative people involved that could, like, tell them no or make them refine their ideas or get them to look at something the other a, a different way. But now it's just they can do whatever they want, and uh, that's why these movies are now, you know, hilariously bad but also entertaining. So... So they've turned into George Lucas, is what you're yeah, saying. Kind of along those lines, <laughs> without the ch- well, yeah, without the history. Oh, uh, video games, video games. Oh, but wait, oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. That's not the end of our mandate. Do you want to talk about that now? Well, why not? Okay. Oh, did you have a format? Nah, I was. It's, what show is this? I don't remember. Is this it, Top Force? I figured since we actually played it, we could talk about it during that segment. Oh, that hit you. Go right ahead. Oh, right. We'll come back. That's a teaser. Because right now I got to talk about new releases because nothing came out this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the big release of the week Beyond Two Souls. Um, Looks like. Yeah, it looks like it's still an average story and, um, you know, all that f- facial capture can't save a boring game. That seems to be the. The consensus of the reviews I'm reading. You guys interested at all? Nope. Okay. <laughs> uh, I just really, I'm just not a big fan of Ellen Page, but I really like Willem Dafoe. I like them both. So, hmm. But and I, but I do like <laughs> DB Sweeney. So I think I'm in. <laughs> it uh, I was. I've been watching some of the behind the scenes stuff the last couple of weeks, so I was kind of getting hype trained for the for the game. But once the mm. once the reviews came out, it just it sounds as you know you have as little to do with the actual interactive elements of the game as could be possible with a controller in your hand. So I don't know. And they said the story's not really worth worth it. But hey, uh, looks like Ellen Page. But well, she can talk to dead people. What do you mean? She yeah. sees spirits, can't she? Yeah, and she's seen in the CIA, and she's Ellen Page. I have she no was idea. in Juno. Remember Juno? Everyone loved Juno. <laughs> was Michael Sarah in this too? Did he make his way into this at all? Probably. Um, he's cameo. the ghost. He's the oh shit. He's the other soul. <laughs> oh, that has spoiled the whole game. I am you so did. sorry, everybody. <laughs> oh my god, I cannot believe I just did that. <laughs> Uh, my bad. It's okay, dude. I'll never invite you back. I I, I guess I, su- I suppose technically, I can never tell if Nintendo releases since they're on Sundays. Uh, Pokemon X and Y is probably a bigger release than that, technically. <sighs> but, but yeah. Josh, did you, yeah, did you yeah. ever Pokemon? No. Okay. <laughs> did, I didn't. Did, you, did you ever Pokemon? <laughs> I'm trying to think if I ever just put anything in balls. <laughs> or let things out of balls. Uh, no, I, mean, I I don't know. I don't know. I don't. I I don't think I've ever played a actually played a Pokemon yeah. game. I I appreciate the you know we were what it couple, is. We were a couple of years removed from it. I think Aaron. Yeah. Aaron may check it out. It's getting good good reviews. Apparently, best Pokemon yet. So, but Pokemon. Uh, game of the year editions of Borderlands Two, Dishonored, Xbox Live Arcade has Orc Attack. Flatulent Rebellion. Sounds classy. Yeah. Um, Fart Wars. Fart they, Rebels. There's <laughs> a sequel to Disgaea. The original Disgaea is out for PS3. I can't keep any of those sequels straight, but I really like the original. And then I just found out um, Telltale continues to sneak out their release dates because this is really useful. Uh, apparently the first episode of The Wolf Among Us, the, the Fable game, is out this Friday. Hmm. Yeah. What I have, I I feel like they just announced it. Yeah, me too. Like they, I felt like they like they're like we're we're taking pre-orders and it's coming later this month and oh yeah, it's out this week. 
Yeah. Do they have split That's fine teams with me. between that the New Walking Dead? What's that? Have, do they split teams to do yes, this? Yes, this is a Walking completely Dead? different team than. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's what I this thought. This team did not do The Walking Dead, but the it looks like graphically it looks, looks cool. Yeah. I have no idea how the gameplay is going to work, so and I don't know anything about Fable, yeah. but I will keep an eye on it for sure. Like, I, yeah. I'm not hitting that order button yet, but no, uh, it looks kind of cool. So yeah, all right. Uh, there's some other random stuff, but nothing, nothing that really caught my attention. Worthy of our conversation, anyway. What about uh, what's coming out on the Vita for free on PS Plus? <laughs> Dude, everything. What is, what is this week? I already probably already ordered it, and just I just kind of do that by reflex. So yeah, yeah. What is that this week? I actually, I actually got one of the thirty-two gig cards. Yeah. It just started just dumping stuff onto it. Not that I've like played that much, but I just I know I'm like yeah, it's. I want to be able to get it all when it comes out. I love that PlayStation Plus. Well, I just even get if you it, don't play the shit, you know you're getting a good deal, and everybody likes good deals. I just grab it on their website, and like I never actually mm-hmm. downloaded the machine, but it's all it's all there. What? Yeah, I do that too, right? But, was there a specific game, or are you just asking because it's probably something good? No, I'm just I'm. There's always something. Yeah. This is a. Sure. It's. I remember seeing the PlayStation Plus list for October. It was pretty impressive. So, um. Oh. Uh, Shadow of the Colossus is the free game in the U.S. this month, I think. Yep. For the PS3. Yep. I gotta figure out how to stream that shit. We'll talk. HD. We'll talk. Yeah, that's... Because I need to play more older games and not finish any games from this year. So... (laughs) Yeah, definitely shouldn't finish The Last of Us or Bioshock Infinite. Nope. Those aren't... Definitely put those off. Yeah. I mean, I heard... Yeah. They're predictable, and they don't resonate at all or are worth a conversation. Nope. No, not really. Uh, Bad graphics, gameplay's terrible, <laughs> story sucks. Like, <laughs> yep. PF's pretty right. much unredeemable games. <laughs> the Vita game of the week is Wor- Worms Revolution Extreme. I remember seeing that now. <laughs> Sweet. So I don't think that's what you're getting at, but <laughs> um, no, but I'll take it. Yep. Is it free? I'm. I got yep. it. I already have it. <laughs> All right, uh, Ethan. You've been traveling, but you also you. You played quite a bit of games before you you left that we haven't talked oh, about. Yeah. So uh, let's get caught up with you. Where do you want to start? Um, so I definitely want to begin with State of Decay, um, because you all, or I think you at least, Justin, yeah. had the opportunity to play this uh, back in June when it was first released. It finally came out on PC, Steam Early Access, and oh my god, I fell in love with it. Oh, just dangerously so. <laughs> Yeah, like I finished it like the weekend. You know, still in how, it's it's How long was it? <clears throat> oh, I spent about like it, I spent about 16 hours on it. I I kind of I think I, I kind feel of like rushed you could spend more. The, and, <laughs> like I you, you you can um because the sandbox mode which I'd read about was coming out like I I kind of thought I want to get through the story and oh, okay. I feel like the sandbox mode will be kind of like my consistent challenge because I kind of like what they had said about it, um, but for Steam Early Access game, I was really uh, happy with because they made it kind of sound like, "Hey, don't buy this because it's going to be real buggy. It's a huge work in progress." I I, I jumped on it anyway because I've been impatiently waiting on it, um, and it I didn't have any issues at all. I think it crashed one time. There were some resolution issues. These are still things again being worked out. Just to let everyone know, Steam Early Access is essentially alpha, or beta, or whatever. So. It was just reminding people because people that. were so upset that this game was not finished yeah. because it was a theme early act. I, like I was furious. I actually started to write an article last week. I, I've, I've, I've. I mean, put dude, it on the back I don't know. Burner. They released a PC game with only controller support. Like you couldn't play with oh, the keyboard. God. So yeah, I was. How I, dare they re- pre-release a game like that? I I think that, you know the, the whole reason why this made me mad is because I feel like Undead Labs has done a marvelous mm-hmm. job in terms of their customer support in terms of engaging the community. They have done an unbelievable job. They were on Reddit talking about the game. Uh, they're always tweeting information. Um, I forget what the community manager's name is, but she is amazing. Like she's on top of everything. They're always giving updates, and people still gave them shit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know about controller support. Like the mouse and keyboard still functioned. You could dig in and you could kind of get it, you know, working out. But again, that it's Steam early access. People like don't. I guess like back in the day when only certain people got into alphas, like that may have been a better thing for everyone because. I, I cannot tell you how annoyed I am with everybody who's like, oh, I paid money, it should work. 
you know, learn the definition, you jackasses. Like, I was, I almost wrote a mean little message, but I thought these are, you know, again, it's a vocal minority and whatnot, but, like, it is so not constructive, and I, it does not help at all. And I actually enjoy being on the ground floor of a lot of these games because I like to see them all develop, and it's just, it's just nuts. You know, it's almost like when Minecraft got all those... Um, uh, you know, attacks early on because they weren't releasing stuff fast mm. enough. I'm like, dude, you can't be any more spoiled than this. But that's neither here nor there. Back to the game. Um, I, I was, I really liked how that game played. I, I liked the fact that there was a storyline. It was actually a pretty decent storyline. I was not expecting anything out of it at all. Uh, obviously, it's not you know a Walking Dead caliber. Thinking about another zombie game that has somewhat of a storyline, but it, it was still enough to kind of keep me engaged. And I was really surprised about that. But the gameplay itself was good because I liked how it was. It was management. It was survival, but it wasn't um, too much. You know, you, you weren't having to keep track of everyone's hunger level. It was it was like an arcade survival sim. I think that's like the best way I can describe it. <laughs> and it was why I, was I enjoyed it enough to keep going. <laughs> yeah, well, and that's what I mean. Like, because, you know, you think of like the DayZ and then um, the War Z or whatever it's called nowadays. And those games had a very... Uh, I mean, it's a pretty big barrier of entry to them. And this one seemed like most people could get in and pick it up. And I like being able to switch between people. I like to be able to see things from different perspectives. I like kind of the random aspect of it. Um, I think the sandbox mode actually sounds more appealing just because I feel like that's something that's going to keep track of your score and you can compete with your friends and whatnot. Like that sounds really cool. But I really enjoyed this. And I really, I'm really excited to see what else comes with um, this this game and if it's a series or not because I do know that uh, State of Decay actually began as like, like kind MMO. of the introduction to a MMO type zombie game and I think they've kind of I know they've backed off the multiplayer co-op in terms of State of Decay but I also know that you know they're not quite sure what their plans are going to be going on from here but I can see that being kind of a cool like a small scale um, uh, small scale like multiplayer game. I think it'd be really really fun. But again, I was I had fun. I was really surprised all the content in it as well. So uh, for 1999, you can't go wrong. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've seen I've seen games that we paid full price for games that aren't nearly as polished as this. And and this was still a game that's you know you know not 100 percent polished polished, but it's good enough. You know it's fine. Yeah. Um, so yeah, talk about value, man. Like I, I tell you. Uh, it was. It was. I was really happy with it, and that's not just because I like zombies. But I do like zombies. But that's not just because I like zombies. So, you know, go, go, go get State of Decay. We're not advertising, are we? Do we have to do that? No. <laughs> I shouldn't point anybody to do that. We. So. Uh, I kind of feel like not knowing much about, you know, not knowing the inside story here, but with all their ambitions for all that multiplayer stuff, I kind of feel like they got locked into some sort of deal with Microsoft. And like, mm-hmm. we're essentially waiting out that exclusivity for to the 360 before they could bring it to PC before they could really open yeah. stuff up because they started yeah. to see how restricted um, Xbox Live was for them and um, and then just kind of being at the end of the cycle, it just seems like I don't know when I saw them put it out for early access and it only had controller support, I was like, they literally just ported that thing as fast as they could so they could they could move on, move on um, because they had such a they had such a bad time with uh, patching that game and going through all. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're not the first ones to tell that tell that story. That um, yeah, you can almost kind of sense the frustration on that side. And there's a lot of promise to State of Decay, so I'm really curious to see. I'm curious to see what it is as the full PC release, like what all is included, because they've still got big plans for it. And um, mm-hmm. I think there's a lot of promise with that studio. I, I that mm-hmm. game surprised me. Like I thought. I thought we were both burnt out on zombie games. I, re- I didn't expect you um, to get in as into it as you did. So, um, yeah. Uh, kind of. I, I really enjoyed it. I kind of feel a little bit more justified in that opinion because I thought I was just like, oh, maybe it just, I don't know, hit something with me, but it seems to be a little bit more yeah. widespread. So. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, more zombies, looks like? Yeah. So, uh, Dead, Dead Island Riptide was free last weekend. It's- that's a good price for um, it. That's a real good price. I actually went ahead. It was also like 75% off. I liked Dead Island a lot. Like, I loved it. It was fun. I had a great time with it. I thought, why not? Let's get Riptide. Uh, I streamed it for about two hours, and I played it off and on. And, you know, it's basically Dead Island. It's basically the same game with a few new mechanics to it. Uh, for 13 bucks, though, I, I felt okay with it. I felt okay with the purchase. What, what's the new um, stuff? 
so th- there's kind of there's kind of this really light base management kind of party management system going on um, where zombies will attack your base and you'll set up defenses and whatnot. Uh, they're scripted. From what I can tell, it's scripted. Um, but you can kind of like level up the people that are in this camp by doing missions for them and that kind of stuff. So again, it's nothing super, super in depth. Uh, the other aspect of it is they've added boats. <laughs> they were like really excited about like, Wait, did oh, they take away the trucks? Got boats. They still have trucks, okay. but there's <laughs> boats, Josh. Don't, don't put that idea in my head, you ass. <laughs> Good God. No, they have boats. They have boats. They have trucks. But again, it's it's essentially the same game. I'm glad I didn't buy it full price. I think I would have been disappointed with it full price. It just it the effort is not there entirely. It it, it the story is even worse than Dead Island. Um, there's some just some parts that they could have maybe polished a little bit more that they didn't. But again, it was it's fun that that just. It's that is my not my numbed game. You just go, you you swing a bat with nails in it at zombies' heads. Uh, you 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 deal with the um, you know the stereotypical characters, which God do they just? <laughs> I mean they they swing for the fences when it comes to like like racial stereotypes. It's I mean it's 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 hilarious because it's so disconnected. It's it's it, it's pretty entertaining at that at that in in terms of that. But uh, it's it's I don't know. Like it's it's a guilty pleasure. I want to play it with people. I think Ghost and I talked about uh, doing a doing a playthrough of that, or actually the original Dead Island, but uh, which a game is way better playing with other people. But I had fun. I've had fun with it. You know, uh, again, cheap. What not? Hey, I have a question about the boat physics. How broken are they? Uh, it's it is you you might as well be driving a missile through the water like it's like, <laughs> like it's just it doesn't it doesn't really I don't know it doesn't really feel like a boat um the time I've spent in a boat I've been like ah it's a boat I mean you just I mean zombies will be like walk, walking through the water and you just nail them and they just explode like it is it is insane it what is, happens when you run into things in a boat boats yeah. usually just like go wow you know. It's a wooden boat. It's not like a steel boat with you know anything cool on it. Oh, not it's like a, a Miami boat. Vice boat. No. Oh no. I'd tell you that, dude. I'd call you and tell you. Or that even Miami a pontoon. Boat. You know, something with a motor. Uh, yeah. It, no, it has a motor, but it's just okay. it's a you know just a simple wooden boat. I got a really like funny a image in my head of zombies driving a paddle boat. <laughs> We're hit very slowly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I could. Oh, you know what? Write that down. Write that down <laughs> okay. in your mind. In what, your mind. No. How pedal. about the? How about the little? You know the 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 pedal, the ones that you like. You pedal with your feet. So They're about, like little two seaters. Isn't that what? Isn't that what a paddle boat is? Yeah, a paddle well, boat. A paddle boat. You have, like, no. Yeah. It's a rowboat. Because like pedal boat. I don't. I thought those were paddle. I thought you called those paddles. They look like big paddles. Like you would spank it. <laughs> No, we're, we're thinking something. about the same thing, whether or not we know what to call it. We're thinking about the same thing. But maybe, you no, know, wait a second. Maybe it is a pedal boat. I, maybe we've always thought it was a paddle boat, but pedal boat makes hey, more sense. I'm pretty sure oars are also called paddles, though. I just right? know what I yeah, had to are. call it at Sarah Land, and that's what they gave me. So, huh? Huh? No, I, I, need, you, I think you might be right. Hmm. I just yeah, never knew that. You know, you can learn something chat. every day. You know, yeah, it. You should. Do you, do you it's know really should. true. Do you know that? What? You'll die the, the day you stop learning, or you should. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why. That's why everyone, anyone that's ever died, that's why. <laughs> they they stop, stop learning. Well, yeah. oh, I think I'm finished learning today. <laughs> Good God! The they pun, weren't taken before the their time. In, the puns in chat, man. Uh. <laughs> I just liked. I really liked how bad the truck physics were in Dead Island. Like when we did uh, like the that, charity marathon. Gee, that was, that was just a shit show. I, 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 oh my god, I got my tr- I got that truck stuck in the dumbest the dumbest places. And <laughs> I just imagined boats just like what kind of places could I if I just I guess I'm I'm picturing like the boats just if you like figuring out ways to get them on land and having yeah. the physics be so bad like they never planned for that and they just somehow go on the road. That would be the best <laughs> situation. Go into the sky. And you yeah, or that. Fire. Sure. That you give me, you give me reason to experiment a little bit more, actually, because I've been pretty, you know, I've been pretty conservative in terms of my boat piloting. Um, but I think I should take it to the next level. I think you're right. I think that that's what I mean. You got to test this. This is the kind of game that you test it just to see what happens. Um, and I think that's that's a good thing to do because I've noticed 
like sometimes zombies will just like f- basically fly into space. You like you'll hit them the yeah. right way, and they'll just like eh, see ya. Like I'm out. That's, I'm that's the next done level with Earth. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it, but it does it does make me. Um, I kind of got excited for Dying Light a little bit more. Yeah. Um, just because that game looks very, very smooth and it looks like it's fixing some of the problems that you know Dead Island has had. Well, that was the frustrating um, part with Riptide was they weren't really clear, and they shouldn't have been. I mean, that would be kind of a failure of their marketing team if they were clear that their B team was essentially working on Riptide, and it wasn't. Yeah. It was about to push out more content, not to f- not to fix Dead Island. And yeah. Dying Light seems to be the okay. We we are applying things we've learned from Dead Island to this mm-hmm. next gen game with fast zombies. Yeah, it, and but I hope it's not, the one thing I got to say about Dying Light is I hope that the environment is a little bit different because it's it's tropical again as far as I've seen from the trailers. And Riptide looks exactly like Dead Island, and Dying Light still looked like it. I know there's new mechanics to it, but I hope that it's, it. The mechanics. There's more to it than just hey, now you can parkour and do all this stuff. Like I hope there's a, another level and and also in addition to the nighttime, whatever happens at that point. But um, because I'm kind of tired of tropical islands. I think it's a, it was a really cool juxtaposition to have blood and guts all over these really beautiful this beautiful scenery. But uh, after being in it, you know, for a long time, it, it gets kind of boring. But again, smashing zombies is smashing zombies, and it's fun, and, and it's good, and it makes you feel good on the inside. So, Well, there's a video you should watch. It's, I think it's like 10 or 15 minutes. It's, uh, uh, I believe it's like a developer walkthrough. Somebody uh-huh. playing the game, and then there's somebody talking about it. But, um, And then you get to see a full playthrough of basically an entire mission where it starts out during the day. And there are these, like, uh, I think there's supply drops. Yeah, and yeah. you're trying to get, the, the character's trying to get to them before the enemy f- different factions get there. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy goes gets to one, and some soldiers show up first. And they actually, uh, you know, he ends up, like, getting away from them and going after the other one. But he goes kind of deep into, like, these city slums. Yeah. And he's jumping around rooftops and all that stuff. And then it end up, ends up getting dark. And when it gets dark, like, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I remember seeing that. That was shown after E3, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, it might have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just, I thought it gave you, it gives you a pretty good feel for that environment. I don't know how big the world is, but, you know, yeah. it seemed like more of the city stuff that you just didn't seem to get enough of in, or wasn't fun in the original Dead Island. And that is, yeah, and that is a good point because the cities in, in the original Dead Island just were like it was like a boxes, it was like shoe boxes stacked on top of each other, and it, it just it was pretty boring. Which you know maybe tropical islands look like that, I don't know. But again, I, I've had fun with it. I, I could be very, uh, I, I'm not analyzing it because I got it for cheap. It's not the greatest game, but it's fun, you know, and that's that's good. You know, I don't feel like I have to be very analytical with it, which is good. You got to have games like that, mm-hmm. silly, stupid mm-hmm. games. It's the Riddick of games. <laughs> that's yeah 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 absolutely it's funny you would think that escape from butcher bay would be the riddick of games but it's really it's not it's, <laughs> it's dead on riptide it's that yeah that was too good yeah <laughs> um what else, what else? i you know i want to talk really quickly about just my initial experiences with castle story without going into too much detail because it's a very early access game um i think a lot of people are going to love this game I, I am really, really excited about Castle Story. I'm really excited about... Uh, I, t- I know a lot of people compared it to, and even myself, because said, oh, it looks like Minecraft and yada, yada, yada. But it has a very unique blend of you know survival, uh, almost a little bit of tower defense, and that crafting, building structures. But the big difference is these structures are, are getting attacked, and you know it, it's... It just it plays out different. It's kind of cool actually building a castle or building something that's going to be attacked, and you have to actually defend a point. And um, I, I'm I was really impressed with your early access. I, I really really enjoyed what I played of it. Um, again, it's buggy. It's early access, so you know we're not going to go into do too much depth about um, depth about what the bugs are. But uh, man, I think it's great. Little characters are cute. Man, you're going to have stuffed animals of those little. Uh, oh, what are they called? Shit. Um, Weebles. Might as well be called weebles. They look like they look Loopies. like they look like little mini figs, like like overweight mini figs, like real round overweight mini figs. Um, they, you know they make little Chubby noises buddies. and stuff like that. <laughs> uh, 
But uh, but uh, be on the lookout for that game. I, I I'm gonna do uh, I think a preview at some point in the future, like an actual official one, because uh, I think people are streaming right now. But we st- we still need to kind of talk with uh, the developers to make sure that anything past that is is okay. So, uh, but I was really excited about it. Um, I uh, and it's just kind I of a up, next step in that stuff. I ended up playing about maybe a half hour of it. Mm-hmm. Holy shit, was I lost! <laughs> It was, yeah, it was. Yeah. I mean, by the end of it, I got, it, I started getting, to fi- getting, it, getting it figured out. But um, it was like, I don't. It was the middle of the night when I started playing it. It was, it was. I forget who was hanging out with me in the stream, but it was, it was comical how much I was struggling with it. And it was, you know, um, I, I don't expect the tutorials to be in place, but it was. I was just, just navigating like navigating the world. I didn't figure out you could tilt the camera until about five minutes before I quit. Yeah. So it was. Um, and they're called Bricktrons, by the way. Bricktron. Uh, okay, yeah, there you go. Um, Bricktrons. Well, it, it, yeah. It, it, it's it's. I think the controls seem really weird at first, but then as soon as you get them, they're actually pretty intuitive. I mean, I was I was pretty surprised with it once you get in the flow. But see, if you've played games like Towns, um, it makes sense. You know, it makes a little bit more sense how construction works and that kind of stuff. So I think I, you know, caught onto it a little bit quicker. Um, but still, there's some, that. I mean, they they need to work that kind of stuff it out a little bit, me obviously. Of like Minecraft beats, like kind of a Warcraft light, like as far as mm-hmm. uh, just the fact that these characters are doing all of, you know, doing all the tasks that you would normally do with your solo, your created, your controlled character in in Minecraft. Yeah. Plus, they have the the strategic elements of uh, people coming to attack you and that kind of thing. Yeah, and, and I think again, it's like a, it does a, a bunch of things to a, you know like a minimal level, and I think the combination of all that, if all those things work out, oh, it will be pretty fun. Um, it's I don't think it's going to be a game like Minecraft where you play like one world for a really long time. I think it's going to be more like a score based. I mean, it's wave based at this point, so it's going to be like you know you're you're trying to get the highest score, you're trying to survive as long as you can. There is a creative mode, and I think there's going to be other modes released, but. Um, I don't know. I thought it was a, a real charming game. I, I I really enjoyed it, and I'm I'm gonna kind of back. I, I played enough of it. It's kind of with Cube World, you know. I mm. played enough of it. Yeah. I'm gonna wait until more comes to it because I just I don't want to be That's... tired of a game that isn't you know like I'm I don't want to get the wrong impression of a game there... that is going to be better. Well, I mean. That's been my approach with early access games, and it sounds like that's kind of been your approach outside of State of Decay, which was barreling through that single player story. But uh... yeah. And, and that one felt more. I mean, that is. I mean, there's the there's the, there is a full version out and that's kind of what. The, yeah, that was already a thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little different, known quantity like that. But yeah, I feel the same way. I don't want to. Like I. I look at sometimes I hate games. betas. You know. Yeah. Just, oh yeah, yeah, like that game. I'm actually not gonna play that until. The, because I know I'm gonna really love it. I just want to wait until it's, there's more game. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So, like, I think about two hours with those games. Like, I did the same thing with um, Sir, You're Being Hunted. Like, I liked it, but I was like, okay, mm-hmm. two hours, good, back out, let's see what else happens after that. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but but it kind of, it's just really intimidating because there are so many games that I've either supported on Kickstarter or pre-ordered or I have an early access. Like, there's just going to be, w- within the next year, like, all these games are going to be released. We're not going to have any time for any of this shit. I'm you telling know? you, Steam needs to develop, they need to get some early access badge to go on their list of game stuff cuz just browsing through Absolutely. upcoming games or new releases I want I want that filter I want that to stand out a little bit a little bit more Yeah. Yeah, cuz we're we're helping we're helping a bit. So um and then finally really quickly Terraria uh it's back it's back in my heart it's back on my mind. Um holy shit 1.2 the update 1.2 like I just want everyone to realize this is unprecedented. You're not going to get like an update like this again, and don't expect it. Like, please don't expect it. I feel like a lot of people will be For- like, "Oh, Relogic did this." I, 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 I don't think you're going to get this again, especially after how much uh, the uh, developer got trashed by the PC community <laughs> because of the release for the Xbox 360 and some of the additional content, and they were just being. I mean, you want to talk about spoiled PC gamers. Like, it was embarrassing. Uh, the guy had to take some time off for family issues. Don't question that at all. Release an awesome game. You should be happy with it. And the fact that he came back from all of that uh, and still contributed to creating uh, basically, like, it feels like Terraria 2. 
um, in terms of the amount of content that's been added. Like it's nuts. Like it's absolutely insane. And even like the little tweaks that they've made to it, uh, it's 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 crazy. Like it's it's really fun getting back into it and just seeing that like they weren't satisfied with what they had at that point. And they were, you know, this was it was done. Terraria was done. Like oh, as yeah. far as anybody knew, last year it was, you know, Xbox three. The Xbox 360 or the in the P, or PS3 version, uh, what were done by a different developer, um, or were were ported over by someone different. So that's you know, Relogic didn't have as much to do with it except for you know just kind of like advisory type stuff, um, for the most part. And so they were like, ah, we're done with it. And now there's an announcement of a sequel, like it, it's being made. You know, I mean, it's it's kind of cool for that to come back to life, but. Um, in terms of 1.2, just some if anyone who hasn't played it yet, so there's a there's a bunch of changes. Uh, I think like a thousand new items, a hundred new enemies, um, or maybe the, the the item count is at a thousand. It, it's something insane like that. New biomes. They've actually uh, given you the ability. This sounds very minute, but you can walk up like one pixel squares. What? So you can go upstairs. Actually, you can actually go upstairs now. Which, <laughs> it, 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 I'm like outside of everything else. That makes such a huge difference. That does. That's it like the worst sense. part about the game. You can flatten surfaces, so you can actually have ramps, and there's all this stuff you can do. Um, and then in addition to that, there's a shit ton of content. It just it's nuts. It's absolutely it's new absolutely bosses? nuts. New bosses, new enemies. Yeah, things are tough. Hardcore mode, I guess. When you uh, essentially when you beat more or less beat the first part of the game, then everything gets more difficult. Unicorns attack you. It's pretty extreme. It sounds not extreme, <laughs> but it's pretty extreme. Uh, and I guess that's even harder now. Um, but, uh, man, I was, I'm, yeah, I was really happy. I'm, I'm happy to a point, but I'm a little bit, because we just got the Minecraft server going, and so I want to, like, keep up with that. <laughs> but now Terraria comes out, and then my brother uh, Nathan started a server on Terraria, and so I'm trying to get caught up with that, and I just look at all these other games that I'm trying to, you know, play through. Um and I'm just like, oh fuck, man. So I'm gonna have to kind of, you know, bide my time a little bit. I'm gonna have to be cautious. I'm gonna have to play that in spurts, or else I'm gonna get sucked into it. Because I think I played for seven hours today. <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure I did. Like I streamed every bit of it. Like yeah. so, yeah, I played a shit ton. Josh or Terraria, you got any questions? Uh, no, no. That's I'm. I'll yeah. I'll play it. I I've been tempted. Like I've I've said before, uh, that this. Terraria appeals to me a little bit more than Minecraft for whatever reason. So um, I I almost jumped in this weekend, but kind of had the feeling I was like, you know, we'll see if we'll see if Ethan picks it up. We'll see if Ethan checks out 1.2 uh, because you can do it a lot more justice than my dumb ass can. So and, uh, <laughs> seven hours later, well, <laughs> well, well, my little brother has just been. Because I, I, I introduced him to – I just recently introduced him to Minecraft because he never played it, but I had introduced him to Terraria early on. And he has been just like sending me messages like, dude, dude, like we got a server, dude, dude, you got to see this. Like it just he's like – he's really pumped up about it. So I was like, oh, I almost had to. I really had no choice at that point, but I'm <laughs> glad I did. I mean it's, it's, it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Cool. Josh, you had much time for gaming? Um, a little bit, and luckily it's been – a while since I've been on, so I've played games since then. Um, so I have just put a link in the chat. Uh, I don't think I've talked about Star Made on here. It's not porn, right? No. Okay. Um, I don't think so. It's a fair no. question, and you're so, in chat. Uh, whatever. I've never posted porn in the chat. Uh, okay, Oops. so you guys haven't seen this. Star no. Made? Well, no. Okay, great. So I'll start from the beginning. Um, I don't know anything about the people that made this. Sorry, I didn't do any research. But I played the game, and that's probably even more important. Um, Minecraft in space. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. What else have you been playing? And then, and then I also play. Um, okay, so I, this is this is going to be a game you you buy, I guess, at some point. But they have like a, like a free beta that they had had up. I found this on something awful forums, uh, which is just a wonderful place. Um, <laughs> And you you start out in a like this is a, it's just like Minecraft you can play single player or multiplayer I mean everything about it just think like yeah it's like Minecraft but you you start out you're in in literally in space and you have uh, like a little tutorial and some materials like blocks and shit and it's like here's how to make a spaceship and you just do that first fifteen minutes you make a spaceship and you can. 
You can just yeah, it's pretty basic, uh, but you can make it shaped however you want. You place blocks together in a kind of a cool. They have a couple of controls for just like making it easy to build an object in space because you know you're in Minecraft you're building off of like point you know existing points. Where here you can just pick like from like a a grid in front of you and roll the mouse wheel to move the thing. You know, and uh, you you build this thing. You have to have a power core. You have to have engines. You have to have um, a computer, you know, you got a cockpit, all these laser guns, all this different stuff, and your ship has different stats, like depending on how good these items are, how many of them. You want to build a Star Destroyer? Go right ahead. <laughs> you want to build a little tiny, you want to build a little piece of crap, you know, space <laughs> truck like I did? Mm -hmm. Go right ahead. <laughs> uh, and you can go inside of them and walk around. Or you can get out of them and float around in, three, in space, or you can just fly the damn things, and and like have space combat. Uh, so there's, it, it's got like an infinitely generating like uh, universe, and there's different solar systems. You've got random planets. You can land on them and do shit. The, the the game is early, so there's not like a ton of stuff to do. Like at least when I played it, the version I played, it didn't have any um like indigenous life forms or anything like that. So the really the only stuff to do if you weren't in multiplayer was just to fight pirates and then go try to mine asteroids and planets and stuff to get better materials. And there's like space stations that you can go to and you can like uh, buy and sell, like do trading. But just the idea of you can build, you know, like some giant machine that just sucks a planet, drive its resources, you know, or to like the Death Star, or you just want to be a little like, you know, little nimble fighter and just blow stuff up. Like, that's pretty neat. Is once they have, like, missions and stuff to do on planets, that game might be pretty sweet. That so, yeah, check that out. It's star-made.org. Looks like it's on it's on Steam Greenlight, so... Or oh, it Greenlight is? It. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's that. Is that getting you pumped uh, up for, uh, what the hell, what's Terraria in space? What's the name of that one? Starbound. Yeah, Starbound. That's uh, way high on my list okay. of yeah. games um, I'm pretty hot for. Yeah. Hot. So, uh, play some of the Battlefield 4 beta. It's a Battlefield? On PC. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's more Battlefield. Uh, it's good. Uh, runs like shit. Okay, I didn't play Battlefield 3. Do you need to sell me on Battlefield 4? Or... You do uh, or if I you didn't out? play 3... Uh, I didn't did get into it. I played a couple rounds, but... Oh, well, it didn't... No, I'm not even going to try. All That's right. a waste of time. All right. Uh, but, uh, Ethan, how about... I mean, can I sell you on Battlefield? Yeah, I'm... I'm yeah. I, I feel like I didn't play enough Battlefield 3, actually, looking back in time. I, I wish I would have played a little bit more, actually. I actually really enjoyed it when I did. Uh, it was right when people were getting back into PC gaming on our site. I think most everybody had it on console, so uh, wasn't as many opportunities to play with people... Um, but yeah, no, I'm 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 looking at, I'm kinda like looking at it like from across the bar, I'm kinda eyeballing it, like I'm like, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, all right. So maybe maybe you know, like send a shot its way and Yeah, maybe just maybe not a shot at it? first, maybe like a beer or maybe like a soda. A soda. soda pop and then see if they like that and then Does that work? Go from there. You no, know, it send doesn't. Them, That's why send I, them a soda pop. Did you send me a soda pop? <laughs> Are you hitting on me or what? What are you doing here? Yeah, so, no, no, I, no, I, I think Battlefield. It, it looks. I mean, does it look good? Yeah, it looks fantastic. Um, Dice wouldn't know what they're doing. Like I hinted at, it doesn't run great on my system with unless I turn the settings way down, which is yeah. very disappointing. Uh, but it, but it is really a, uh, is really good looking game, and the, the there's just one map in the beta, um, but uh, it's got a couple game modes, and I just. I just played the large conquest, so it's sixty-four man mm -hmm. um, mode, and uh, yeah, it's cool. I, I'm not sure if I'm not sure if it's like if I really want to get into another competitive multiplayer game. Mm -hmm. I just I less like every year goes by, I just get less interested in wanting to do that. Like I couldn't play uh, hardly any multiplayer Call of Duty the last round just because I just like ah, I just. I didn't get the thrill out of shooting other people that I once did, you know, the competition. Yeah. Um, Battlefield was always uh, had a little bit longer legs for me just because half the time when you're in those gigantic games and you're 
play in your role, you're, it's, it doesn't feel like a competitive game anymore. It's almost cooperative. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's a little bit different. But I, it was cool. And I was like, yeah, this is really neat. This is a really good Battlefield game. Mm-hmm. But I don't know if I'm going <laughs> to get it. Well, I mean, unless you don't like sci-fi... Like, I don't know why people wouldn't just play Planet Side 2 in terms of scope. Like, yeah. I feel like the scope is way, way bigger in Planet Side 2. Yeah, um, oh, absolutely. It'll be tough to... I mean, I like, like, you know, modern day... I just I like modern day a little bit better than sci-fi. But that being said, it would be tough for me to go from the battles we had in Planet Side 2 to, like... I mean, 64 people is a lot of people, but still, like... It's not that, you know, like, yeah. uh, by comparison, it just doesn't feel like it's going to be as big. So, Planet Side 2 spoiled a lot of people, I think. I think it's going to make things difficult. But, I mean, I mean, Battlefield has its, it has its people. Like, it, I'm not oh, saying absolutely. that play it, but <laughs> it has for more, me. Technically, more players than Planet Side 2. Well, <laughs> and and uh, on the new consoles, uh, you should get an experience, like, visually no. and, and size-wise on the maps and with players mm-hmm. that should be very similar to the PC. I was say, this would blow should... some uh, console players' minds a little bit, I think. Yeah, I think you're going to see like a huge difference between, you know, like you're going to see it on running on the PS4 or Xbox One, and you're going to go, holy shit, that looks so much better than Battlefield 3 did on my Xbox and mm-hmm. on my 360. So uh, you get like a real proper experience. Um, so yeah, but it's it's more Battlefield. It's really everything about it's really sharp. It's really good. So if that sounds appealing, you're gonna probably like that one. And it's just it's out pretty soon. So yeah. you know, who, get who those you, get those pre-orders in. What? Which one of our allies are we fighting in that one? <laughs> who's, uh, who's America fighting? I don't remember. I was no. of course I was an American, and I just. I, I see enemy and I just shoot. <laughs> well, Someone tell see. they tell me who the enemy combatants are and I shoot them. I don't. Yeah. I don't really need to be thinking don't ask questions. Too, too deep. <laughs> no, I don't ask questions. <laughs> I mean, hey, they're shooting at us. I don't know who started it, but I'm gonna finish it. <laughs> Here comes my tank. I'm gonna roll over, roll over your kids. Um. Uh, what else? What else? Oh, played some GTA. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Five or V. Mm. Oh, V, yeah. Mm-hmm. The crossover um, with the sci-fi show. Yep. Yes. Oh. Yeah, so you've got these three main characters you're playing, and they all are actually these, like, lizard alien things. <laughs> uh, and, and dressed as humans. Um, and everybody has an Uzi. Don't humor me. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's all right. It's good. I mean, it's man, it's the best GTA game ever made. Hot damn. But I, I just fuck. I just don't. <laughs> uh. just, that, that, that's not enough. Cracks me up. So many people have that opinion. It's like, yep. People are I, nuts about it. I guess it I sold know. like a trillion copies. Yeah, it did, and it and it deserves you, to. Really, it's like what a great game. But have you talked to anybody that um, just fucking loves it? Like, to like. Like this is this is it, man. This is the video game. This is like for a game to s- sell the way it has. I haven't run into that person yet. If, if you if you could if you took a copy of this game and you took it back to like the just even like the launch of the of these consoles, oh, shit. probably yeah, people would stop making games. <laughs> it's that fucking good. It's like it's wow, holy shit, how'd they do this? You know. But today, meh. I mean, it's uh, it's fucking. I don't know why I can't just have a blast with it. I see. It's just like one of those things where, like, I see how how good this shit is, and like, you know, the driving way better than four. It's actually fun now. The way they did, they do like the cops and all that stuff is refined as well, and and the, the world looks great. Uh, I can't believe what they're squeezing out of these consoles. <laughs> Holy shit. Like it is. I mean, my my PlayStation at one point I smelled smoke, like, and it was getting hazy in the room. I'm like, this thing is going to, it's going to burn up. It's like actually using up the material in order to power the graphics. Yeah. Like it's literally. And I know how this stuff works. I mean, you know, and that's. But trust me. Um, 
Yeah, but uh, man, I just I just thought like let's do let's go do a mission. Where where are those missions at? Uh, well, it's about a twenty minute drive to get there. Oh, look, I'm driving. I can follow the. I can actually obey traffic laws. That's neat. Look, the lights work, and there's a turn signal on this. Oh, that's neat. You know, oh, I go crazy. Uh oh, I ran over somebody. Look, here comes the cops. Like, fuck that. I'm just so tired of that gameplay <laughs> loop. The same one over and over. And like, the mission stuff is is fine. Like, once you're when you're in the middle of crazy action mm-hmm. and the characters are at their best and the dialogue is at its best, it's like a good story and it's fun. It's good writing. But the hours of sh- of the same old shit in between just don't. There's just not fun anymore. Mm-hmm. Also, the soundtrack. The rate okay, the soundtrack like the soundtrack soundtrack is good. The uh the, radio the score. I'm sorry, oh. the score. Oh. But the like the radio station soundtrack stuff like I don't like it. <laughs> I maybe I'm just like not cool enough to like it. It's just I'm sure it's like, if you like all these different genres it's probably great, but uh, it's, it's not very good. I, it's not my it's not my thing. Uh, but hmm. I don't know. I mean, you guys play. You have you guys. What do you guys feel? I've watched no. is, like, quite a bit of it, but it's like the first game in a long time. I've I've said this before. First game in a long time that I'm okay just watching, like because yeah. I don't know. Like I, I'm just technically the game is incredibly impressive, and it's mm-hmm. an amazing feat. And I, you know, I'd be curious to see how if other teams could pour in the type of resources that Rockstar was able to throw at this game to see just how dense games can really get. But the actual playing of the game and going through the missions and stuff just, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I haven't seen, I mean, everything looks really good. I just haven't seen that like, or really good, great. But I just haven't seen that like, just that, you know, game of the generation type of, moment that you you think would be associated with all this and it's just yeah. i don't know it's um it's its own thing and it's it's uh but i yeah it just doesn't it doesn't interest me at the same time yeah. i don't think i've played one since uh san andreas and that was great but i feel like at the age that i was back then and at the time i was like really excited about it and not that i'm that mature at this point but i'm like it doesn't seem like I, 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 after play it, again, it comes back to an after playing Saints Row three, and Saints Row four, and just that ridiculousness and knowing that like, yeah, I'm driving and doing that kind of stuff, but suddenly I may be doing something completely insane. I look at you know I look at Grand Theft Auto. I'm like that just kind of looks a bit boring to me, regardless of how smooth yeah. the gameplay is, re- regardless of how well done it is. Because again, I'm not saying it's, I'm not a Grand, Grand Theft Auto. I'm not the, the demographic. I'm just not. Hmm. But like I, I want either because you know I don't want normal everyday stuff. Like to me, it's like oh, driving and that kind of stuff. Like I want monsters or I want Saints Row three and four, which is just a bunch of crazy I, bullshit. And I don't even know if I want more Saints Row three and four. Like those games. I mean, I, I feel like I really got my fill with three and four. Like those. Were oh yeah. Some of yeah, my yeah. favorite game experiences, but I don't even know if I want more of that. So, um, yeah. well, it's it's almost like the Grand Theft Auto series is. I mean, I, well, the original top-down, the ones they're, you know, I'm gonna leave those out of this, but it's all, it's almost like the the whole series, like the games are just kind of based on like these novelties, like you know, they're doing stuff that other people weren't doing, and that's great, but th- it's the idea of holy shit, I can't believe I'm doing this thing mm. that is a realistic depiction of like of of kind of you know the real world, I guess, uh, for lack of a better term, but and then you get to it's like all the rules of the of the real world, but you can just cut loose in it and do all this. You know, it's this kind of weird, like violence fantasy thing, and that that's neat. You know, that was cool with Grand Theft Auto Three, and since then it was just refining that and adding more details. But it's really there's there's not much difference between this one and three. Just mm-hmm. to, you know, it's like, like they've the story in there and the right. I mean, I'm saying like I've dumped the praise on it, but I don't know. You know, and and they've added. Some cool stuff with the heists, and that's neat. And the multiplayer stuff could that could turn out to be something yeah. really great. And I'm sure a ton of people are gonna love that. And it's gonna be, I bet it's so much fun playing co-op. Like I, the heists aren't in the multiplayer yet, but they will be. And 
I bet that's going to be a blast, you know, with with three of your yeah. friends and pulling off a planning and pulling off some awesome heist like that. I bet that's great. Yeah, but you uh, know, maybe that's where they yeah. really put their put their money. Like maybe that's where the density of that world shines because there's only so much that you can cover and interact with in that big of a map with the story. You know what I mean? Well, you might be surprised. That it's there's a lot of single player game in there. Yeah. But uh, I would have been just what. I would be way more interested in this game, or, or I'd be much more interested in a sequel if they just take it to a, a really wacky place. If they're going to do something like this, like the open world stuff again, put it in space, be, make it in the future or something like crazy. Give me flying cars or some bullshit like that. Um, that would just be, just I don't know, something, anything. But medieval times, medieval Red Dead, you know, whatever. Something just way, way different. Mm-hmm. Just, Star Grand Theft Auto. Sure, why not? Yeah. You could be a space trucker. <laughs> Down on his luck. Pretty, he pretty. had one bad one bad haul, and he lost his. You were lost fascinated his, with space, space truckers. Well, anyways, uh, man, I, I, let me. Uh, oh, uh, do I have anything really fun to talk about now? Jeez. <laughs> yeah, games are bad. Games suck. You know what's been great, though? Uh, tabletop gaming. Yeah! yeah. <laughs> Shit. Uh, you want to talk about our the second half Woo. of our mandate? Woo! Woo! I just... So I was, I was thinking back to this. We uh, we played the Star Wars uh, X-Wing miniatures game, uh, which mm-hmm. was part of my Gen Con haul from this year. Because um, I really liked the demo. Um, never really played a miniatures game. I play, I, when I did the demo of one of the battle tech, the mech warrior stuff or whatever, last year, and um, you know that was super cool from the uh, statistician side of me. But like, getting into a battle seemed to be a little bit intimidating. But uh, X Wing's really, really accessible, so I was excited about it. It's pretty affordable too. Really, amazingly priced for what you get. Um, so yeah, for, we, we uh, like decent paint jobs on whew, decent yeah. quality miniatures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, yeah. And then Josh got me excited because I bought the Millennium Falcon and the Slave One. So I got uh, my, my Boba, my Bobes. And uh, um, anyway, we um, by, by the end of it, I was kind of cracking up at just how animated we were. Like it just, like it started off as this just, you know, this kind of feels like a really tactical experience. And we're kind of, kind of calm. But by the end, this thing, this was an epic, epic space battle with, yeah. All kinds of drama, probably better than any of the prequels, um, and its storyline. And um, <laughs> and I don't know. We were just we were just yelling up a storm, and it just I don't know. Every time I play, this is only probably you know my sixth or seventh time in the last couple of years playing tabletop stuff. But just just how different of an experience it is from multiplayer video gaming. Um, it's just it's a completely different type of fun, and. Um, I don't know. We we had a blast. It, it mainly because we can't steer uh, spaceships for shit. Oh my god! <laughs> I had, oh my. So I so at Gen Con, um, with Justin and uh, <laughs> uh, JPT are on it are on a team playing against uh, two other people, and uh, I think on a second move, Justin like flew two of his ships into each other or something. Yep. I don't know. So it was some like terrible terrible move. I think one of them went like, off the map maybe too. Like, yeah, yeah, and uh, and then not too long into the the this game on Saturday, I flew Kyle Katarn and the Moldy Crow st- directly into like the lone asteroid on one side of the table. <laughs> uh, it's funny because so the the way the game plays out is like you've got um you you got your ships lined up on opposite sides of the table and you have a bunch of asteroids and and stuff in the middle and. Uh, to, in order to move, like you go, you have a turn order based on like how good your pilots and ships are, and that's kind of established early on. Everything kind of happens at the same time, but it's important that you do the moves in the right order because you would maybe end up being like behind a ship versus direct, just right in front of it because whatever. So, but in a lot of traditional miniature games, you just to get out of measuring tape, and you actually say like yeah. this thing goes ten inches or whatever, you know, and uh, that's dumbing it down a little bit, but basically. Well, this has these movement templates, these like cardboard things. So it's like, well, an A wing's really fast, so it's got this, this. Uh, it can go like, you know, uh, farther 
fast, you know, because it's faster than the other ships or whatever, or something could have different movement options based on like how fast it can turn or whatever. So you put down these little cardboard templates, and so so you can't like there's no fudging your moves. Like you're, it goes exactly two inches to the left in a forty five degree arc or whatever. And and that's exactly what drew me to the game was because they had all that stuff pre made, ready to go out of the box. No measuring tape. Mm-hmm. You just you just use these little cardboard sticks, and it tells you how far you can move if you're moving one or two spaces or whatever. And that was really easy to grasp and understand. And the fact that the board itself it looks kind of big, and like you like I sat down. I'm like, really? This is gonna be? We've got we've each got three chips. This is gonna be kind of you know kind of lame. And uh, but I mean honestly, two moves in the game, and the action is really pumped up. So. Um, it uh it it, it ratchets it ratchets up ratchets up the action pretty quickly and like I said super accessible so that's why what why I liked it and then yeah we got into a little bit of a mess so, yeah well, so did. yeah so so the thing is so uh, you don't actually get to pick your moves by you don't get to take the templates and put them in front of your ship and see exactly where it goes you have to from this little dial secretly choose your moves like both players at the same time and and so you're like ah I think if I pick the soft turn to the right at speed four i think it's probably going to put me about here and you just kind of have to guess and sometimes in that process you don't you're looking at the dial and you kind of forget which way is left and which way is right uh, and you pick the wrong one or like all kinds of bad things can happen i don't know if you just saw that picture but uh i had my three ships somehow all, ran into each other. all yeah <laughs> all ran into each other one turn like i'm like fuck how did i do that and it was just it just that's the way it worked out and and Justin came in and started to just blow my shit up, but it was like really fun, like back and forth kind of thing. And I mean, I mean, uh, it's very cinematic the way those battles play out. That's why I, I, I can really get it into a tabletop game if I can just picture those kind of animated cutscenes, those little moments of oh shit, this is happening. And literally, our match ended with we had two ships left. Well, it was one on one, and I, mm-hmm. I remember I just I kind of made a turn the move before, and we just went head on into each other point blank range and it was just like you know you've got three day three dice i've got three dice let's see who wins and you know it was it was it was dramatic it was it was fantastic and and, and chewie's dead yeah chewbacca died <laughs> oh man again do you know they killed him in like the books what did you, why what, did, what an like, asshole george thing to do. lucas approved technically because he just gave he gave the whatever company publishes those like, you know he's like here's the list of characters that you can't kill. And they he didn't put Chewbacca on the list. So they killed him. It was uh, it was some, it was like a really famous writer. Uh, I can't remember who it was, but yeah, and it, he just got crushed by a moon crashing into a planet. Shit. What, so, just because you're not on a list not to die, they just like oh yeah. well, we should kill him then. That doesn't. That's yeah, Sa- cold, Sa- uh, Salvatore, Bob Salvatore did it. Uh, yeah. Um, well, I think that the book, the publishing company said like we want we want we you to kill one of the characters. Kill them. We need to sell books. Hmm. Yeah. So they killed. So he was like helping like uh, evacuate kids or something like that. He was it was a real noble uh, death, but i uh, sort of except he. I mean, be, be, nobody wants to be crushed by a moon. Yeah, a moon. Uh, yeah, ultra heavy, man. Oh, <laughs> I know. <good>. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I just I, like I've been trying to get in tabletop gaming, and like I said, this has been this has been the the bridge game for me. Like part of it is because of my affinity for Star Wars and my understanding. Like I know what these ships are. I know who the you know who most of the pilots are, um, except for the ones they made up from the books. Um, but uh, so there's enough familiarity there but like i said it it's really easy to play it was also really fun just because i don't know like the first time i we we got together to play games i assumed that there's always somebody at the table that knows every single rule inside and out and the fact that it's kind of cooperative in that like you're kind of learning the rules together and looking up interpretations and um it's important not to play with an asshole because we kind of had a moment where we realized Oh shit! We've been mm. interpreting interpreting this rule wrong the entire time, um, and but we just stuck with it for the rest of the game because it made sense at one point, and next time we know better. But like, just that that stuff's not like so black and white, and people don't have to be dicks about it. Like that was always an intimidating factor for me. Is like, uh, you know, it's not when I have to be 
like actually use strategy and I don't know the full rule set that's that's a little bit intimidating but uh, this one this one I don't know it's just it's easy and fun to play and uh, I was surprised how long our match took it took like three hours but uh but we had a lot of points on the board yeah we did yeah like yeah that's part of it you don't have to they don't have to be that long if you just get the just the starter box it's just like two tie fighters and an x-wing it's makes for a fun game but it'll only take like a half hour yeah Yeah. because we were done we did our demo in less than a half hour at the at gen con and we had Mm -hmm. blown everybody up so yeah and that was a cool table so fantasy flight games that people that make that had an actual like a this this table was made to look like the death star and it, it actually had like the 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 terrain you know and like the metal panels and all that I and mean, it was just painted up real nice had scorch marks on it and all that shit turbo lasers so it was that was crazy looking i mean that's the kind of detail stuff like you'd only see in like a diorama or something <laughs> you know, like playing playing games on it it's pretty cool cool yeah highly recommend yeah, that game stuff. Um, I'll keep my video game stuff kind of short, but I don't know when you're, when you're talking about having your big dumb fun, your your Riddick game with Riptide, Ethan. You need to mm-hmm. try. You need to try out Shadow Warrior. Oh, I know. I, yeah, I, I, that game I is more fun it. than it has any business being. It is. <laughs> I have just the 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 shit eating grin on my face has not gone away every time I played it, uh, especially because, um, you know, my first session was really great. And then I took a break, and when I came back from my second session, I was like literally before a boss fight, and mm. um, and it just the, the action just really kept me into it. But I mean, my favorite thing in this game still is the fact that you have the the katana blade and just all the slicing and hacking of limbs of all these demons is just it's satisfying. The dude, I don't know, they 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 kind of he's you know this is a three this is based off a of three D realms game, very much inspired by Duke Nukem, um, but. And the you know the dialogue in this game is super cheesy, super lame, but hilarious also. Mm-hmm. And just and they don't overdo it. Like he does, he does his like, you know, his taunts, um, uh, whenever he kills dudes or is just making fun of the demons. But um, it 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 works. I don't I don't know. Like I can I can see it putting off some people. Like I mean, the dude's name is Low Wang, so you, that that gives you just sort some sort of barrier of entry of what what they're gonna do with that. But it's not a it's not obnoxious to me. And, um, mm. I don't know, the action's fun, balancing your, you know, your kind of, uh, mystical powers with your guns, with your sword, and, I don't know, just hacking up demons is, is, is fun, and this has been, I was looking for kind of an old school shooter experience and didn't expect to find one with a sword that was this much fun, but it's... Now, my, I, I can't quite put my finger on what, like, how the game plays, though. Like, people have said old school, mm-hmm. somebody said kind of serious it's, Samish... Yes, yes. Is it like waves? Yeah, and... it's get new, get to an area, and waves and enemies will come at you, and it'll okay. be like a new, you know, upgraded enemy to fight with each wave, and um, you know, and then you you clear them out, you explore, find, try to find money for upgrades, and then uh, rinse, rinse, repeat, go to the next, go to the next section. But did, much, you, did you play Serious Sam three? Yeah, much better pace than Serious Sam three. Okay, because that was the, the beginning of the game was awful. Yes, like I yes, wanted to. Yes. I wanted to hang my. That was the worst game intro ever. Fuck. It was. It, and, oh my god. And yeah. this has, is just a fantastic intro. I mean, okay, from good. their selection of soundtrack at the beginning to the first interaction when you discover, holy shit! I just cut that dude's head off. Like, and then, <laughs> you know, the fact that you, you keep hacking up the bodies and, you know, there's all kinds of, um, you know, the highlight clip I put up. I think also sums it up. The uh, the fact that there's bunnies all around this all, the, all around this world, and you find a couple of bunnies mating, and if you do, if you hack them when they're mating, you know one of them turns on you, turns into this like death bunny, and heavy metal music starts playing, and it sort of chasing what? you down, and you got to defend yourself. It's really crazy and random, and uh, <laughs> I don't know. So this was, um, I believe that the team that worked on Hard Reset worked on the game, but um, the guys from Serious Sam Three. And from Hotline Miami, the guys from Hotline Miami end up publishing it. So it's like that. Those are the three teams involved in this. And oh wow, no, they made a fun game. Hard Reset's awesome. Coop's been playing through that. But um, you know, I'm I, I'm pretty much only using the sword and um, you know upgrading. Uzis? S- huh? What's that? Not the Uzis? No. Oh, I did. I did. I finally got double Uzis. So that's been kind of kind of fun. Mm-hmm. But uh, they're starting to get to be more enemies where I do have to shoot them. 
but uh, I don't yeah. know what is what is it about Uzis that are like so fun? They're I mean, aren't those just like the biggest pieces of shit? <laughs> like you can't hit anything with an Uzi, right? right? <laughs> Well, it's like a, it, it, but it's kind of like a gun that acts like a sword because if you get close to someone, I mean, you could saw somebody in half with an Uzi because it's You're really right. a high rate of fire. <laughs> so, I mean, if you think about it, like you've got a sword and then like a sword that shoots bullets or a, but you, know, you like, yeah, but you got to be think, two feet away. Like yeah, you got to yeah, you got to be real close. <laughs> you actually have to be closer to someone to hit them with an Uzi than you do with a sword. Like, <laughs> I think I, I think it was in um. If looks could kill with Richard Grieco, where he's like the high school student in, like he's in Paris or some shit on like a field trip. James Bond Jr. the the, the movie. Yeah, 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 and, yeah, he, yeah, yeah. and he gets in this. He's in the middle of this uh, this like big room with like multiple like uh, levels, like a like a cylindrical room, and he's got an Uzi and he's shooting it from the hip and he's just swinging it back and forth just with the trigger held down and he's just killing everything. And uh, ever since then, I was a kid, obviously when that came out. I, Ever since then, I was just wanted an Uzi, real bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I this, like I said, this I was ready to write this game off. I thought the fact they were remaking it was completely dumb, and uh, turns out the game's pretty fun to play. It is, I believe, it's forty bucks. Uh, you can um, get yourself a ten percent discount code pretty easily on Steam. Um, I've got like five, so I, if you want one, ask me. Yeah, <laughs> they're just giving those away. But uh, yeah, this is a big surprise and a hell of a lot of fun. So. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. wait, uh, breaking news. I was just Googling um, if looks could kill and then uh, Uzi, and there's a, that's a lyric in a salt and pepper song. <laughs> uh, I think it's a joop. If looks could kill, you would be an Uzi. <laughs> you know that's a reference. It's gotta salt be. Salt and pepper loves Rich Greco. I think Left Eye <laughs> loved it the most. That sounds like a Left Eye type of line. Um, finally, what else was I going to say? Oh. So it's worth mentioning that I, um, I don't even know why. Okay, I know why. I know why I went back to World of Warcraft. I installed that damn Battle.net app a while, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> and we, uh, we actually played some Diablo 3 last week, and the game is still, that is, that is much more fun with more people. Uh, we had a good time with that. But, you know, and, um, up updating my Diablo 3, I decided, you know what, well, let's just, for a rainy day, install World of Warcraft so it's just, it's ready to go. And, I don't know, I was I was playing games this weekend and just looking for something to play, and it just got in my head, and I was like, you know what, I need to play through um, the opening section for the pandas. I need to make a panda. So, I streamed that yesterday. Luckily... I don't. I don't know. I don't think I would have made it through if Aaron hadn't jumped on to make a panda with me. It was much more fun to just be kind of panda idiots together. Um, and uh, yeah, we got through the entire opening section. Like we got off of Panda Island or whatever that was called. And uh, <laughs> you know, yeah, is it called Panda Island? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it should be. Yeah, it should be. Um, it's all on, a, on the back of a giant turtle. That's why that island's been a. Hard to find because that turtle is just swimming, 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 swimming. Mm. Um, but um, yeah, so I made a monk, and it had been—I think it had been a, a year and a half since I last played. I played a few months when Cataclysm came out, but I, you know, there's no rhyme or reason why I decided to all of a sudden play. But um, I've always enjoyed Warcraft's content, the story stuff, and this was just curious to me because they made an entire expansion just for this to get this race in the game. And um, it is, you know, the race that started off as a, a April Fool's joke, I believe. Um, and um, I don't, it, the, the stuff I noticed, like the, you know, I still think the artwork kind of holds up. It's 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 definitely showing its age, but still, it's so si- stylized that it all works and it all looks like Warcraft to me. It all feels good, you know. And after you know playing Guild Wars two and the Old Republic, I still. There's something that clicks with me about Warcraft's gameplay as far as how the grind goes, and it's still fun. Um, you know, it wasn't anything special, but it was uh, it was fun to run through with a with a with a buddy, and just a bunch of weird shit happened. Like we, tur- I was killing birds after it turned me into a frog, just because I was in the water, and sometimes it would turn me into a skunk. And apparently, monkeys and pandas don't get along. Uh, oh, well, everyone knows that. Mm-hmm. Um. And then there's like this creepy old man panda that just would—he was your quest giver, but he would just 
kind of just show up right behind you every time you finish the quest. Like he's really struggling to get around, but he's oh, he's just like stalking you creepily. And um, what else did we see? We we took down Falcor. There was a big dragon thingy. Oh, you took him down. With, hey, we had to, took him downtown to have dinner. We had to watch shoot, a movie. We had to shoot fireworks at him to bring him down. And How then, would you do that? And then I beat the shit out of his feet with my fists because I'm a monk. And then he was. And then we moved on and fought a, a giant lion statue. Um, well, newsflash: you don't get to name the princess. <laughs> shit. We uh, we captured some Pokemon. Um, there were definitely like these these elemental gods that look like cats that would follow you around, and they were definitely Pokemon. Um, and yeah, it was the adventures of Busk, Buffkins and Sizzlepan. Um, not Sizzle Chest, unfortunately, but uh, um, we, had, we had fun. The one little thing I noticed that I don't know why it stuck with me, but just every time they added this in, sometime in between Cataclysm and now, and it's just like. The the polish that they're, you know, how long has this game been around? The stuff that they're able to just add to it. Whenever your character looks at a map, he actually pulls out the map in the world now, and you can see when somebody's, you know, looking at their inventory. That never used to be there. That was the that was the one new thing I noticed outside of all the Panda content. So, hmm. And I got really pissed when they made me uh, work with the Alliance for a little while. So, Well, aren't Pandas good guys? Pan- so the, the Pandas, they just kind of do their opening quests... And you meet the Alliance and the Horde, and when you're done, you get to just choose which faction you want to go with. I, I mean, pandas are good. Yeah, so they went with the Horde, because they're the best. But they're, they're, they're good guys. They're friendly. Actually, they're not. I hear they can, they really mess you up <laughs> like a panda, hand-to-hand. A panda's claws are like an Uzi. Like, yeah, but it's, they're it's, actually it's really bad. gentle. No. In captivity. Well, in right. captivity. <laughs> Yeah, of course, they can't help it. They're sedated. So they're, they're hopped up on Ambien. I'd love to go see one right now, but our national zoo's closed. Ooh. Thanks, Obama. Ooh. <laughs> I don't think Aaron and I are going to go back to the game. He actually did the starter edition of the game, which is probably smarter because he didn't pay any money. I I got a thirty day subscription, so we'll see what happens. But um, you what the? Oh no, we 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 got done with panda island and i felt like we had accomplished what we set out to do and uh so you wanted to reward blizzard or you just wanted to get the what are you what are you saying i'm saying i wanted it to be tied to my account if i ever chose to continue rather than starting a brand new account with an isolated character (laughs) all you did was increase the chances that you're actually going to do that again (laughs) Which I won't do unless all of you want to all of a sudden decide to play and we can oh. join up. And, mm. Yeah. Okay. I hate pandas. I yeah. know you do. I know you do. They smell. Okay. Have a different animal? Um, Koalas? Oh, I'd play a koala game. Yeah. Or a three toed sloth? That too. Mm-hmm. That'd be kind of boring. Sloth game. But mm. Sloths are so cute. They love giving hugs. <laughs> In captivity. <laughs> um, real quick, uh, what kind of stuff you got on the docket there, Ethan? You threw out a a nice. Uh, we finally got a creative editorial out, out the door today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, gonna write some things, write some some stories uh, about video games. Um, I actually got a bunch of reflex reviews, previews, d views, uh, all that kind of <laughs> stuff happening uh, coming out. A lot of games, a lot of games sit there waiting to be. I expose to you all. I'm gonna have a consistent streaming schedule. Uh, I'm hoping to. That's that's my goal for the. No, no, no. I'm not hoping to. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna have a consistent streaming schedule. Uh, Terraria Tuesdays, Minecraft Mondays, uh, Wednesday again. Cheap and dirty Thursdays. Cheap and dirty Thursday. I'm gonna start trying to stream Cheap and Dirty Gamer from now on. Um, uh, and then. I don't know what else I'm going to do okay. until XCOM Enemy Within is released, and then I know what I'm going to do in reference to that, but it's a secret. <laughs> Within Wednesdays. Oh, there we go. Enemy Within Wednesdays. Yep, there we go. You were working on a, a Brotabulous video a while back. 
Which we uh, uh, we hit a wall. Yeah, there. it wasn't a. Uh, it's just not up to snuff oh, yet. Let right. me just say that. Let all me right. just. It's just not up to snuff. Your last XCOM, Rotabulous, was really good. That one was. That's like the. I mean, I you know I don't want to milestone almost. Yeah, I, I just I don't want to. We'll just say, let's just you know. Wacky we'll Wednesdays wait. with Ethan Moses. Oh, I you know I was thinking about bringing Beefy Challenge back, but I don't even like know what to do. Matthew convinced me that I should eat a pound of ground beef every time I fail, and then, like the instrument got healed from there. <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know. We'll try to bring those back. But yeah, more streaming, get more people on. People have been great on the stream. They're talking. Uh, I want to do more multiplayer. Yeah, I definitely. I would second the more multiplayer streams coming your way. Yep. I've done a lot of solo stuff and. I can talk to myself, but uh, sometimes I need I need a bro. Um, yep. Yes. Yeah, so the we've still got our giveaway on the site. Uh, we're a few views away uh, from closing that out. I think we have enough entrance, but uh, we want to make sure that our highlight reel gets out there. So share that video, and as soon as we get enough views, we'll close down the contest and give away our hundred dollar gift card. Um, and then um, most of my work the next couple of weeks is going to go. It's more so about behind the scenes. We're meeting, doing meetings and all kinds of stuff for our charity marathon upcoming on November 2nd. Um, and uh, actually planning out a, a game jam related to that as well. Um, so I'll be working on that. Still keeping my... Um, wow. I just cut the uh, the video for my last Spelunky Daily Challenge. We And I, I'm getting worse at that game. There was, there was one run that literally lasted... 72 seconds oh, wow. so um so yeah that's still going on but I, I i still have fun with that game it's a good either a good wind up game or a wind down game depending on my my streaming schedule so are you trying to say that that 72 seconds is short or long <laughs> it's pretty short oh yeah <laughs> <Ugh. laughs> shit <laughs> yeah i yeah i last a lot longer than that and Actually, on the Vita, I do. The controls are better. <laughs> Everything's yeah. better on Vita. I was gonna say, how many games do you get in with your poops? Like, oh, oh Spelunky! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! I can't believe I haven't beat it yet. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a lot of games open on my live streams. I've got to kind of close that down. I've got Earthbound, Wind Waker, Skyrim. Um, and I've got to play some new games, so I'll try to keep rotating those games through, keep up with my Monday night kind of game curious related streams as well. Um, but uh, yeah, be on the lookout for a charity um, marathon announcement here later this week. We'll get act gamers up and going again and um, start taking donations for child's play and give you kind of our stream schedule when we we're starting to figure out what games are going to play and how that's all going to run. So be on the lookout for that. I'm going to play Vita for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I won't even have to plug in because the battery's that good. Vita Bros, 24-hour marathon. Great. Oh, God. <laughs> that sounds miserable. We'll just play 24 hours of Frobisher Says. Yeah. Yeah, uh, there it is. Fro we could play Persona. Frobisher Says. Persona oh. Hey, it's got, uh, it's, I think it's got some dating sim kind of stuff in there. Oh. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. I love dating sims. And panties. Oh. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> Tell me more, panties. Josh, you working on anything besides what you've written down? Yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> I'm, what, I don't know what. What did I write down? Don't tell me. Uh, William Wallace. Yeah, I'm still, I've still got a like a Gen Con thing, but then I also I like had all this other th stuff to say about tabletop gaming, hmm. and so you may not want to publish any of that stuff. <laughs> Nah, <laughs> but your... but you know what? Hey, you can always check it out on buffkins.tumblr.com. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> if you guys want to see tabletop stuff, and I'm I'm sure that'll be, we'll take it. So, um, and, but yeah, maybe we'll we might see a little bit more of Josh around around these parts, a little bit mm -hmm. more. Um, we get out of here with game pitches. Um, oh shit! I forgot about this. Yep. Yep. Oh yep. man! I forgot we're on Top Force Podcast. <laughs> I love this show. <laughs> Ethan, you want to kick us off? Um, you know, I really, I, I've really been consumed by my constipation, so I was just thinking about Fiber Troll. You know, like just 
get those intestines cleaned out, like go inside you, inner, you know, inner space type shit, and and then make you shit. I mean, that's oh all. I got. Literally, that's all I got. Like I was just thinking about. Well, today I was thinking about like I was eating this fiber cereal, and I thought, you know, wouldn't it be cool as, as I'm eating this fiber cereal? It's not cereal. It's tiny little spaceships, and there's a lot of them, and they're they're competing to be <laughs> the one to finally release what I can only describe as a fecal butt plug. <laughs> and, you know, it's like I kind of like have a freedom thing. It's funny that, Josh, you wrote freedom in, in terms of your projects because that's what I'm, like, kind of dealing with and waiting on. Um, and I just, you know, that's just what I've been thinking about. I think maybe that'd be a good game. It'd be, a, like, an educational game, not on, like, private. I was going to say. This is... Just talking about the types of food. You should avoid cheese. Don't eat a whole lot of cheese. Yeah. Uh, keep the uh, snacks to a minimum. Uh, coffee it will clear you out, but not in the way that maybe you would you you are intending. Um, and just really celebrate fiber because we need more of it in our bodies. It'll make you feel better. You won't feel gassy. Um, but yeah, a little spaceship, little fiber cereal spaceships fighting poop. That's a little, that's literally all I have. So, I think what you're really trying to say is if we could. Like the short version of this is, you want Dennis Quaid to go inside your asshole and I, clear I, you I, out in a tiny little spaceship, just like he did in <laughs> Interspace with Martin Short. Uh, just instead of going in to stop a heart blockage or whatever it was, um, he just needs to go into the into the rectal cavity. Yeah, exactly. And maybe there's, you know, because I eat these little mini baby bells. You know those little mini, mini baby bell cheeses, those little tiny ones. I eat a lot of those, like a pack a day, and I should stop because I'm, you know, really concerned about my health in the long-term future. But those could be like the enemies, and so you've got fiber cereal and little mini baby bell cheeses, and when they go inside, again, but spaceships. So they're yeah. they're food, but they're actually spaceships, and they're, they the just important fight. Important word here is spaceships in my body. A spaceship. <laughs> the that game sounds much cuter than the spaceship. way I said it, I guess. <laughs> Dennis but, Quaid in my body. Well, it also <laughs> yeah, it also avoids that inner space copyright if we call them. Spaceships in my body. Yeah, yeah. Spaceships I mean, in my body. That's just a, I feel like something Reggie would say. <laughs> Play I, I the really game. like inner space. Or at least I did last time I saw it in the 80s. So oh, wait, wait, I think wait. it holds up. I don't know. We've already had an I, inner space uh, game pitch of, uh, what was it? Um, we did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did. Or you did? I wonder if someone did. Yeah. I think, yeah, JBT did. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, was it going in your butt? No, he was going no, inside. His, just... He was going inside Randy Quaid during that pivotal scene in Independence Day. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's all right. That's just, different. That's I think really this whole different. thing gets way more exciting when it's Oculus Rift. I think all of our game pitches should include that. And you are actually in a spaceship suppository, <laughs> and you're going in the butt. You're like, and it's clean. It's not a dirty game. It's like at this butt. point, it's you know what I mean. Like you're not everything's is going to be pretty pretty clean one until you get to yeah. Like, I was gonna say because the, they've been compacted for so long. Yeah, and oh. then and then once you actually get in there, you're playing that uh, Peter Molyneux cube game where the top <laughs> cube. What's it called? Curiosity. <laughs> Curiosity. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. He's chipping away at it, or Chip, just you well, know what? Really, Yar's Revenge is really say, what we're talking about, I was right? <laughs> Break breakout blockage is something. Ar- yeah, Arkanoid. Yeah, Arkanoid. <laughs> All of it, whatever it had takes. God, now I can't. I'm never gonna be able to look at Arkanoid or Breakout and not just picture. All you're gonna do is see me <laughs> hovering over the top with like a like a scrunched up look on my face. <laughs> Please help. Please help my rectum. I'm. I'm. I'm Rectal not, space. I'm glad I did not go to Oktoberfest. So Fuck, this sounds so good. I want to play this game. <laughs> Josh, you, got, you want to take us in? Huh? That little ship, it went into... It, it had to fly through, like, liquid. So you can't just go right into, like... Dude, this is the 21st century. Bum. It's been, so like... Right no, it's, yeah. it's, it's little waver, little little fiber cereal. It starts out as cereal, so it goes in the mouth. Cereal oh, no, I, this No, yeah, uh, cereal no I, over, I overruled that. We are entering through the butt. Well, we can put cereal in the butt, too. It makes her a better intro to the movie. 
Yeah. Or, well, what are you doing with that cereal? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the, there's a obviously there's like a scientist or a doctor involved, a doctor scientist involved. Yeah, and he's doctor got the scientist. Little, he's got That's the, his doctor Steve he's scientist. Got the, <laughs> he's got the spaceship on a spoon, and he's going open up, and you got a goatee. And then it's like, and it goes in, and then you, and that's how you launch. <laughs> Every time you die, you have to go through that sequence again. It's a quick time. <laughs> yeah, I like Aaron's uh, shove a Wheaties up your ass advertising campaign. <sighs> uh, Michael Jordan. What? <laughs> Josh, you want to go in a different direction? Or did you even write this? If I say, if I say no, do I, what? Whatever. I okay. So I, I like. I texted you about this like a week ago. I've I've been sitting on this game pitch. <laughs> you didn't even know you were gonna be on the show until like ten minutes. No, I was gonna be on the last one. <laughs> okay. And remember? Yes, I, had to work. I do remember. I do remember now. What the hell? It's your show. Okay. So, um, this was actually a dream I had. Like no <laughs> shit. And uh, uh, if you just can bear with me for one moment, I'm bringing up my notes. <laughs> So this is a thing I do. so when is I have this from a your dream, dream journal, yeah, is it's from this my space dream cats? journal. Okay. No, no, no. So I call this uh, food for the bat vultures, and uh, that also could just be given away too much. And maybe you want to just call this food or even sustenance if you want to be uh, like super pretentious and dumb. <laughs> but uh, so it's like I had this. This is what the this is what I, exactly how I wrote it down. Like right when I woke up. Uh, pitch Black meets Friday the Thirteenth. I am an ex-military space chauffeur. Uh, sexed up, unappreciative teens start dying when perpetual dusk begins and the bat vultures come out. I try to find hiding spots to save my own life. Now, these things. So, obviously, I'm a space chauffeur and I'm Bruce Willis in this stream, right? <laughs> so, this could obviously be uh, any kind of first-person, you know, game, whatever. Uh, but uh, in the stream, I uh, I was flying. It was like taking these kids to this like lake on this planet, like somewhere, like some tropical, you know, uh, uh, vacation planet or something. And and it was this part of it was like this part of the year nobody knew about. It's like the sun gets stuck and it doesn't go down because of, I don't even know what. But it's when it's dusk, these things come out and they're just like gigantic bats. But they have vulture uh, necks and heads on the on these giant bat bodies, and they're like cartoon vulture necks. So they look like you're the piping under your sink, you know, where they whoop. And but the worst part about it was that people would be hiding inside, like inside shit, and there'd be the necks, the heads would go, would snake inside of cracks and stuff to to try to eat you. And. Uh, the idea is you got to hide from these things. Yeah. And you have to <laughs> use yeah. the kids, use the the teens as as like bait to so save your own ass. There's not enough games where you get to use kids as bait. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, Are they teens that... or preteens? No, they're teens. I said okay. sexed up. Sexed up. Unappre teens. They're unappreciative. Well, nowadays everyone's sexed up. Preteens are just as sexed up as <laughs> teens. Well, I, okay, they're, they're preteens, but I'm pretty sure we can't get away with that. No. <laughs> well, yeah, but maybe you should push the envelope. What kind I mean, of, come on. What kind of bait are we using? Is this important information? Uh, what bater? <laughs> so what kind of bait are we using them as? Was the is the sexed up side of them important? That was hard to say. Well, well, yeah, because you ha you can't feel for them. You know what I mean? You can't okay. like if you yeah. sympathize with them, you're gonna not want to play the game. <laughs> you have to just have like a lot of disdain for these kids. Yeah. Okay, that sucks. Wait, I got another one. It's called Babyvania. I don't know why I named it that. That was really dumb. Again, though, I write these right when I wake up. But this is literally like about video games. <laughs> wait, just wait, my. My baby son has a sudden, mysterious, life-threatening condition while on vacation, while on family vacation at the Super Mall of America. <laughs> to save his life, I must control a nanobot using a PS4 to destroy some blockage in his abdomen. I'm so, I, fuck, I swear to God, this is <laughs> <laughs> plays like a Metroidvania. Nanobot has double jump. Son <laughs> dies while I have the game paused to go to a family function. Swimming, I think. 
I swear to God. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> oh. This is what I have. This is the shit I dream about. Anyways, yeah, it was like a side scroller. Is there an upside down castle? Um, <laughs> his butthole. No. <laughs> I, this can we can we can we play this game? Does it sound like it's fun? I would play both those games actually. <laughs> Jeez, <laughs> I like the, I like the idea of pushing children in front of giant vultures and getting away as 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 a space show. <laughs> I like that a lot. I actually really like that a lot because in like think about all those games that like like Outlast and and Nisha, you're running. But you're you're still sort of a good guy, sort of. But you're running away, man. What if you were just a horrible asshole and you just like, ah, fuck, you get out there. No one needs you. I like that idea. I like that a lot, Josh. Okay. I also like the the exploring butthole baby or whatever. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was, it was in his abdomen. Oh, okay. There yeah. was something, some kind of blockage, it said. Yeah, but I just, yeah. Yeah, I'm in. Anyways. I'm in both. Yeah. Kick started. Fiber yeah. is on the mind. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah. Screen like that. <laughs> oh. Who? I Swimming, think I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I think we're gonna shut this madness down, flush it out. Uh. Oh. Ethan, Josh, thanks for joining me tonight. I think. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Chad, well, thanks for. And my final appearance. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, thanks for hanging out. Night Force will be back again uh, next week. And we'll see you then. Night Force.